we got a lot of we got a lot of people here. So um, let me just start off by our usual ritual of running down the the current viewers and what's going on. Not a lot has changed. Uh, we have, but let me just look at them anyway. So current release candidates. At this point, we have the maintenance viewer and the media update viewer. Uh, media update is probably not ready to be promoted um, because there are some upgrade problems with it that have to be solved. Um, only on Windows 7. Please, people, give up Windows 7, please. I know that doesn't do any good. Um, <laughs> we like Windows 7. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, uh, I mean, there's still people running XP, so not going to happen. Well, yeah, but them I don't support, so I don't worry about those. <laughs> um, the, uh, but anyway, there are a bunch of bug fixes in the maintenance viewer. There's the media update viewer is the latest version of CEF. It's probably newer than the version you've got in your Chrome on your desktop. Um, and um, the render branch is actually making good progress these days. A couple of problems have been solved with it, and we're getting further ahead on that. Um, unfortunately, it also has a Windows 7 problem. Um, but progress nevertheless. So those are all coming coming along and we'll continue iterating on all of those things. Um, there is the 360 snapshot viewer, project viewer, and the Animesh project viewer. Um, 360 is not getting a lot of attention at the moment in favor of some other work, but it's got an improved version that was updated a couple of weeks ago. And uh, Animesh is getting a lot of attention and we will fairly soon probably be ready to move that to main grid. So, um, uh, fingers crossed. Keep we're, hoping for that. Uh, apparently, we're holding out for your uh, media changes. Okay. Um, uh, I was kind of hoping that was going to drop soon, like next. Uh, the current blocker for that is that um, under some conditions we don't fully understand yet, some of the background processes that CEF starts up don't exit, and they just sit around in the background for ages. And the problem with that is that that means that those files are open, and the next attempt to update the viewer will fail. Um, um, should so, we... So we've been holding off on... Um, our second phase, well, our really our first phase of QA uh, on the media. Should we just push ahead with you know our QA process rather than wait for it? Like you know, I know you can't give me dates, but ballpark. Uh, week, month. It, since we don't understand what the problem is, it, I I really can't make any guesses as to. I mean, it could be that tomorrow, Callum will say, "Oh, I found it. It's this flag, and it's all fine." Um, you guys will but, probably wait till we start the QA, and then you'll drop it. <laughs> uh, could be. Um, <laughs> Thanks. I, it, we we won't do it that way on purpose. How about that? I um, know you are. A uh, couple other things that actually it would be good for you to make sure you get. I think I saw that you had merged one of these. Um, we're introducing a new cap. Two new caps. Um, one which will be used when the viewer first logs in to read all of the deferred IMs. It turns out that the reason that um, if you have a lot of IMs that were that were queued up offline, um, uh, the problem is that sending that many things as UDP um, pretty much guarantees that some of them won't get delivered. Uh, and so uh, since that's not something that has any particular real-time significance, um, we're moving that to a, a cap over HTTP, so in t the, the viewer will um, get uh, get the get the IMs all as a single, nice, neatly packaged um, HTTP response, um, which is nice. And 
we also have a new cap that we'd like everybody to start using as soon as it's available uh, or as soon as possible after it's available, I should say, uh, which is used to read what the correct set of abuse report categories is. Um, we get uh, we get a lot of well, in the past, the categories for abuse reports were just part of the viewer, and um, then we would change them, and that change wouldn't completely propagate. And of course, people don't pick up the new viewers, and and so forth. And so the result is that even though we haven't changed what the categories are in our viewer in quite a long time, our supported organization still gets lots of reports in categories that their tools don't really expect to see. It causes them uh, to have to reclassify things. It's kind of a pain in the neck. Uh, it would be it would be better for everyone. Um, is that coming out of Fire's Determined as well? Uh, yes. Really? Uh, it may only be old versions. It must be old know. versions, because I'm sure that we had corrected that. Um, the last couple of releases. Yeah, I think I think but, you your current releases. In fact, all your recent releases uh, match what's. But uh, but there are lots of your old viewer. Hmm. Um, because people don't seem to be. Uh, we only have. It. We've only got three versions running at any time. Uh, well, they still get lots of reports that are wrong. Um, so I don't I don't know how to explain that. Um, anyway, so we're introducing a new cap, and you'll get the categories and their IDs uh, all nicely localized already. Um, uh, and then hopefully that will, at least in the long run, um, improve our ability to manage what categories you can do abuse reports in. Because um, it doesn't really belong in the viewer. It's not really a viewer function. Um, so we'll we'll get that um, we'll, we'll get that sorted out uh, and um, I guess that's that's the big news for what's in our pipeline at the moment. I have a quick question. Yeah. Um, are you having you guys are using the latest KDU. Are you having uh, crashes in the 32-bit if someone tries to upload textures larger than, what is it, Pantera 10.4? Yes. Yes. You are, too. And we're reporting that to Kakadu. I don't know what this is. It's only in the 32-bit. Right, right, right. We're thinking of we may solve that uh, rather than delay release. We may solve that just by um, using the previous Use version of KDU for the 32-bit. Yeah, that, we could do that, too. Uh, that's an interesting thought, actually. Um, that won't make the security people happy. There's a security fix, and they'll just want it. This is good. Um, but it is trade off. So yeah. uh, that's something to think about. Maybe we'll get a bug fix from them. I don't know. We're, I, I haven't checked on the status of that today. Uh, but we're trying to, we're trying to get that addressed by going back to them with um, yeah <laughs> well uh, security fixes are fine if they if they don't prevent the problem by just crashing the program but, uh, um, so uh, as a couple of people have already commented on we have Ebe here as a, as a special hey, guest today welcome uh, and uh, so the is floor is open be for like questions. A, is there going to be a Sandstar 2.0 now? <laughs> <laughs> no, no shocking news today. Oh, good, oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> well, the only shocking news is if you haven't been around for the last two days and haven't seen the news out the land. Yes, prices. good job on the land prices. Uh, long overdue, and kudos for doing it. Yeah, that's, that's something that we uh, want to continue to do. And I've, I've mentioned over time um, that we want to f basically find a way to have a more better distributed economy uh, or we make most of our money from, from land these days. And we want to shift our revenue model from land to other fees. And so you've seen over the last couple of years a couple of 
land drops, you know, with the biome program and now the mainland drop, and then we have increases seen a couple in of trims. fee increases on, on, you know, redemption fees. And um, so we're going to continually try and find a way to sort of shift some of our income from, from one side to the other side over time. Basically, I feel we have property taxes that are too high and consumption taxes that are too low and sort of continually in, in sort of as briskly as we dare to do it, sort of try and shift from one side to the other. Well, it's definitely a good change, uh, especially for mainland because it's so sort of uh, abandoned, I guess. Yeah. I don't know if that is the right word, but it'd be nice to see uh, some of those properties well, fill up again. I don't have any numbers to share, but the support people are, are telling us in chat that they're basically overwhelmed with people um, really? asking for, uh, you know, can I please have this hunk of abandoned land? Can I oh, that's buy fantastic. That? Uh, so that's, that's, which so is, of course, exactly what we, what we hope to yeah. have. Yeah. I mean, generally, the, the team here, you know, me and Oz and Grumpy and Patch uh, and, and Brett and others, I mean, our goal is to grow. Second Life, both uh, on, on users and revenues, and uh, uh, part of that ultimately uh, we believe we have to make land uh, cheaper. It's just so sad to see when good places disappear because of, of cost of uh, and seeing a lot of it ownership. Yeah, and so, but it's obviously hard to snap it overnight from. You know, dropping land massively and increasing. Well, because then you alienate the people who have been paying, right? Yeah. So it's it's kind of we have to like turn those two dials. You know, how quickly can we turn them and uh, make sure that we still have a you know healthy uh, economy in, in the world? So we'll try and be aggressive, but also thoughtful in how we do that. Well, I think with the perm allotment changes that you guys did um, last year. That was huge, uh, and uh, and then seeing that like seeing something done with Mainland is like was very welcome news. Yeah. Yep. Oh, Dory asked anything that works for private regions. Sorry. Uh, Dory asks in text anything that works uh, for private regions. Yeah, we we have to see now. I mean, we did we did the buy down program. Uh, like what was that year and a half ago or so, and uh, uh, we want to, uh, you know, we we then have to find other ways to make sure that you know, we make enough to continue investing. Um, so uh, maybe next up will be a fee increase somehow, somewhere, and then sort of consider uh, what we can do for for private regions as well. But yeah, we we do want to lower the prices on, on land across the board. It's just how quickly can we do it? I mean, it's been so lopsided where we had almost zero consumption tax and uh, almost all of our revenues coming from, from land. So it's it's uh, tricky to shift it, but that's that's our goal. All your eggs in one basket. Yeah, um, that's, that's, that's part of it. But it's it's also just, uh, you know, the, the the two kinds of revenue have, have very different properties, and it's kind of nice to have a balance. We're working on that. Um, and But we're going to try to do these changes not not slowly necessarily, but in a measured way, right? We want to be able to do something and then take enough time to see what the effect is, because uh, any economy, including the second life economy, is is pretty complicated, right? There are first and second and third order effects for everything you do, and we want to try to be careful and measure what's going on so that we don't we don't get our paint ourselves into a corner somewhere. Yeah, so we're going to have to give this mainland price drop a little bit of time to sort of see what what the effects are before we start changing other variables, and then suddenly you don't know what what's cause and effect and what you're doing. Right. So, but we are, we, we do have a lot in the pipeline um, of, of various kinds. In fact, uh, I should take the opportunity to. You're not people. taking my people. You're not people. taking my people. <laughs> delete that link. Somebody got delete that link. Uh, <laughs> we, we are, we, we have 
We have three Second Life hires posted now. There will be a fourth one up, hopefully early next week. Um, so, uh, um, very. Uh, and I hear very much want to be interviewing be, for this. You might be snagging uh, an open source developer who we had our eyes on as well. I think nope. you may have got to them first. Oh, no, no comment. Yeah, I know you can't comment. <laughs> And uh, how's uh, Sansar doing? I think so to be, in full disclosure, we're focused on Second Life, and I don't think most of us here pay attention to Sansar as much. Um, how's it going? Uh, it's going. I mean, it's it's slow going. We're we're still in what we call creator beta, uh, being mostly focused on you know, is it possible for people to create uh, good content on the platform? And we're now kind of shifting our priorities to kind of the other side of the equation, like, you know, how easy is it for consumers to come in, the performance, uh, finding content, finding people, having social interaction. So a lot of work uh, kind of on the other side now um, of, of the equation. Uh, I mean, you kind of need both supply and demand. and. We sort of worked a lot on the supply side, and now we're going to start focusing more on the demand side and then start acquiring some traffic and measuring sort of conversion rates and retention rates and, you know, working on those kinds of things to get it going. And then a lot of focus on VR, you know, making the VR experience um, uh, even tighter, uh, you know, from inverse kinematics to uh, – how, what it feels like to grab things and interact with the environment in VR, uh, better VR UI for how to uh, sort of again interact with other people and and the environment uh, from with VR. So quite a heavy VR focus, um, and we're not yet really and and you know, kind of the plans for how to start driving users and uh, the key use cases for what those users will do uh, to come up stick around so we're just actually you know over the next several months here are going to kind of go into growth or, or getting growth which we have not done today today it's all been about just working with uh, creators and you know what what kind of content can they create and give them the tools and apis etc to be able to create good stuff um, so it's a massive project it's coming along um it's for me, it's it's exciting to finally having it at a place where it's sort of the organization around it, the team around it are sort of in a good place so that I can actually spend more time in Second Life and sort of um, show up here more often. In it's various, nice to have you here. Yeah, it's great to be here. I've, I've Last year was a little f weird for me for, you know, had some personal health issues to deal with as well, but... Um, I'm good now, and uh, between Sansar and personal health, I, I've not spent nearly enough time in Second Life over the last year or so, so I'm, I'm looking forward to um, uh, come back and spend more time with the Second Life team and, and you know, in the Second Life product, and again, um, Sansar was never intended to be a replacement. Uh, I mean, the Venn diagram between Second Life and Sansar does overlap quite a bit in, in some ways, but there are two separate products with two separate, completely dedicated teams, and we just happen to have two products that are have share some uh, similarities, but there's also a huge amount of differences. So uh, we're not... Well, I, ironically... I mean, so when I saw your name, I was a little bit like, uh-oh, the last time Abby was here, <laughs> there, was, there was a bombshell. Um, and, and uh, But interestingly, uh, you know, the, the overall concern, I think, for the community was, oh my gosh, Linda Lab is, you know, going to work on Sensar and Second Life is going to die. But in fact, the result um, turned out that Second Life, if anything, uh, grew in, in feature set. and. Um, stability and all kinds of things by quite a bit more so it seems that you know a, a smaller development team um has been able to accomplish more uh, than they were before yeah i mean there, there, no doubt that um you know and this is credit to you know to oz and, and 
Grumpity and Patch and uh, all the players on the team that what they've been able, you know, been able to accomplish, even though, yes, they did lose some resources uh, for us to invest in Sansar, but... Um, they did more. You know, they, yeah, they, you know, they, their focus... Honestly, we saw more they, positive change in, yeah. in the, the years that Sansar has been in development, what, two years now? Um, yeah, and I think that's that's due to their, their focus and prioritization, yeah. and I think maybe in previous red years... Tape. There were, yeah, less red tape and maybe also less wild investments in areas that weren't necessarily as relevant to what, what you all want and need. So I think it's just been smarter investments uh, and from a highly dedicated and awesome team. So that's that's what you're seeing. The, the third-party viewers from. used to have the advantage over Linen Lab in that third-party viewers had the smaller team, and we didn't have to go through all the different departments and all these things we had less sort of um re not regulations but uh, just perhaps less organization but in a fairly good way and so third party viewers were able to sort of innovate a little bit quicker i think the little lab but as of lately you know we just struggle to keep up with you guys <laughs> slow down <would> you? <laughs> Jeez. no we don't want to slow down but you know um, now it's and it's it's just a ginormous product too. Um, when you think about all the aspects of, of Second Life and Sansar, it's it's kind of crazy, complex products. You know, consumer experiences, creation, markets, compliance, server infrastructure. You know, like I mean, it's communication. Like nothing else. Like, yeah, it's just. Um, and now we're in the process of picking up that entire incredibly large and complicated infrastructure and moving it, it in into an entirely new framework. <laughs> yeah, how's that going, by the way? <laughs> it, it's going, actually. Uh, Is it? We're making progress, yeah. Um, you know, we've, we've got a couple of, couple of very small things have moved out to the cloud and some bigger things have... We have, we have actually run uh, experimental regions... Uh, on cloud service, and it worked. Uh, I mean, they weren't. There were there were some functional limitations that uh, that you know we have to we have to do a lot of work to solve to before we could begin doing regions that, that ordinary users can can get to. Yeah, I was going to say, have you um, tried putting fifty people in them? Uh, uh, we've tried putting a, a, a lot of users in them. Uh, I don't know if we got as high as 50, um, but actually the performance was excellent. Uh, uh, so, uh, so we're pretty optimistic about that. Uh, but it it was it was other uh, it was other issues that that we have to deal with, not performance. Um, so we're you know we're making progress. Is that something Sensor will be moved to as well, or is Sensor being developed on that platform already? Sans Sensors are right there. Yeah, ah. Sansar led the way in a lot of sense for oh, excellent. how to be completely on AWS. Isn't that funny? Because in some ways, the, the perception has been that Second Life has been sort of the testing ground for Sansar, uh, sort of SL being you know, the prototyping and, and then perfecting well, it in Sansar. If, but in this case, I suppose it's Sansar. Yeah, if you, well, it goes both ways. It, yes, there's there's definitely some movement in both directions, but the the you know a lot of a lot of what cloud services in general have put in place is management of dynamic resources uh, you know that are that are somewhere out there. Um, a good deal. We had to invent a lot of that stuff. I mean, we have a lot of the same capabilities in Second Life. I mean, we have a whole infrastructure for for bringing up a new set of inventory servers or a new set of login servers or a new set of regions and how to rev the versions of them. And we have we have all that stuff that was invented in house to 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 scale to Second Life size and reliability. Um, and, and now what we're having to do is you make, why, did, why didn't you make AWS a product then? <laughs> <laughs> that seems to be quite successful. Yeah. 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 Um, 
Well, there's this interesting backstory on that, but we won't go into it. Yeah. But the the <laughs> the um, the now what we're having to do is sort of take what we did and figure out how to adapt it to slightly different ways of solving the same problems. So, um, but it's uh, yeah, we we. Um, we we hope to be able to distribute things in much in in ways that will be much better for people that are far away from our current data center. I'm assuming it would be more cost effective for you guys as well. Um, yeah, well, we I mean, certainly those, hope uh, it works out that way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you look at the trend lines of of uh, having your own versus uh, running on theirs, uh, I mean, theirs are not cheap though. I mean, no. AWS is not cheap. But it, Neither it, is it's having your cheaper. Own. Like they, they lower prices, like, I don't know how many times per year or two. And it's good that Amazon, and, uh, Microsoft, and Google are getting in this game, too. And it's, you know, it's hyper Brings competition. Yeah. So um, ultimately, it's just doesn't make sense for us to be competing in that space, but just take advantage of all the stuff they do and uh, spend our energies elsewhere. And uh, I mean, with Sensor, we also have. Um, the ability to spin out and shut down on the fly so we don't need to sit on non-visited uh, what we call scenes or regions, if you will, in Sansar. So that reduces the cost a lot too, um, and uh, which means that there's never any reason for us to ever get rid of any content because it's basically just storage if it's not being utilized. Right. Um, and whether we explore that for Second Life, we'll have to see once we just get the whole thing over to that cloud in the first place. But yeah, geographic distribution could be advantages. Um, spin up, spin down could be advantages. Um, the ability to have different classes of, of server performance in, in the pricing model somehow. Uh, yeah, it, it could be a, there are a lot of interesting uh, opportunities once we get over there we can consider yep and that's that's going to consume a fair amount of our engineering attention but uh we've got more than a few uh yeah you know, we, we little, have, little, have little we treats deep in some treats way coming right? yeah environment enhancements yep um what would the as have you guys thought about yet? Uh, what the switchover may look like when you do that? I mean, I I, re, I seem to remember the days when uh, every Wednesday the grid was actually turned off <laughs> for an hour while you guys updated it will, everything. It will certainly be our objective not to not to have to tear <laughs> the grid down to move it. Memories <laughs> of uh, giant gorillas with uh, <laughs> giant gorillas with hammers. You know. I do remember those days. Yep, yep. Uh, we've been trying yeah, to resurrect probably, that graphic, actually. I mean, some of it <laughs> will barely be noticeable as various services sort of transition from our own facility to in the cloud piece by piece over time. So uh, it's not going to be some sort of all or nothing crazy flip overnight. Right. We already have a couple of minor things that are that are on cloud servers. Uh, nothing that's directly user-facing. We're sort of doing things from the back. To some so extent, you're, you're looking roadmap-wise right? maybe another year before anything like that comes to I, fruition? I am very carefully not going not gonna <laughs> to make any predictions about dates. Um, but I got to try. Take. Come on, Jess. He won't give you a view. I got to try. <laughs> I got to try. Maybe, maybe Abby might slip. You never know. It's a, it's a, it's, it, it, it's something that we're pursuing as aggressively as we can. Um, I mean, I, I'm not even sure that we have a, a sufficiently comprehensive view of all the problems we have. You know, some, some of them will only become apparent as we actually put things into production. I mean, shoot, that happens, that happens uh, even today um, with, with, very ordinary things that we 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 put some new change into production and 
as much as we try hard to QA things and simulate things, there is there is just no way at all to even come close to simulating either the the volume of load that you yeah agni or more importantly the variety of behaviors and um, and content differences that you see on agni we, until you put it in the hands of the yeah. residents you can't really know so you know we'll we'll uh it, We'll we'll do it the way we do um, any important change, right? We we part of part of making any given change is that we have to have a a plan for how we're going to put the change into production and how we're going to get the change back out of production if it turns out that it causes a problem. And we we have to do that regularly. Uh, you know, it's not unusual to uh, it's not common, fortunately, but it's not rare to have something that a problem doesn't become apparent until we put it into production and then we take it back. Right. Uh, so, uh, and, and then go away and fix it and try again, usually in a week. Uh, and, uh, I mean, that's what the, the server release channels are all about. Simulators, we can put them out and, see whether or not they're causing a problem. And if they are, then we either leave them alone or roll them back to the old version and then we try again with a better set of code the next time. So, you know, at some point it, it will probably end up being true that uh, some release channel will be on cloud servers when the, the, uh, the others are still in the data center. Uh, but we haven't gotten near that point yet, so it's, it's not nearly. How long? How long before out. you're near that point? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> gotta try. Gotta try. <laughs> okay, I, I gotta throw. I, I gotta throw Oz on the spot a little bit here. Um, actually, I'm, I don't actually know, but uh, do you have mirrors in Sensor? <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> oh, you don't? Damn it! No. Damn it! You know, mirrors you know, would be really nice. Requested. <laughs> <laughs> I'd request it, but it's, I don't think it's even on the current roadmap. Um, Darn it. But we well, keep trying. Yeah. We keep trying. Uh, yeah, when the. <laughs> I was kind of hoping you had it in a sense. <laughs> so so I guess. Ultimately also so I could, I could life? say, yeah, so I could say, there you go, Oz. You see, we can have it in SL. It's in SL. Yeah. I'd, well, they're, they're, they're mirrors in other products. Yes. So it's not a matter of if it's possible or not. It's just whether, Exactly. You know, it just oh. needs it just needs somebody like, uh, like I don't know, I have the Linden to put his foot down and say, we want mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> Make it happen. Just saying. Well, I mean, you, <laughs> you can fake mirrors in a way that is, you know, less, uh, has less potential for serious performance issues. We have, we have, I see some artists here. I see uh, Brian, it's here, and, and I'm sure they would like mirrors too. Yeah, and if, if you make something that kind of looks like a mirror, but it's actually just a, a, a another version of your avatar uh, being rendered, because an actual mirror in itself, if you want to mirror the entire environment and everything that's going on, yeah, it becomes someone very, puts up very a difficult. mirror against a mirror, and now, like, whoa. Um, so oh, this is Second Life, Abby. They would build a carnival hall of mirrors. <laughs> yeah, they would. <laughs> they absolutely. Yeah. There would be ninety-five mirrors, all at weird angles to each. Yeah. Two FPS. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, and that's like point I mean, oh oh two FPS. Yeah. I mean, a challenge in Sansar is that we're trying to make sure that everything can run at ninety frames per second. Yes, yeah, so that's in, the in thing v, with VR. VR. Is VR. that how is that how come you guys sort of shelved the VR project with Second Life because you just couldn't get the frame per sec to stay yeah. up there? Yeah, basically, yeah. yeah. That's what I That's a, yeah basically, yeah. That having a <laughs> you, you don't have to pay twice the price to do uh, stereoscopic, but it's definitely an additional cost to do stereoscopic, yeah. and then to have that you know at ninety frames per second at all times, like but you know, and and Second Life has a lot of advantages in how it was created because it's not trying to hit that limit. 
Um, so in, and as part of the, re so from that then falls out all kinds of design decisions, like in Sansar, you have a distinct edit mode and then a, a published or, or baked runtime mode. Right. And, and that is to try and sort of having like we have in second line, which is awesome to have sort of authoring and runtime all in one, um, that, that comes with sort of performance constraints then on, on how fast you can go. So, uh, yeah, Sansar is definitely, a lot of the design decisions are sort of derived from hitting those frame rates. And, and I'm assuming you actually cache everything um, ahead of time with Sansar, which you can't really do, because with Sansar you already know what the, the, the observer is going to uh, come across whereas in second life that's completely unpredictable because it's content generated or creator generated in real time yeah exactly yeah. so i mean there's obviously dynamic content in sansar as well and you can you know spawn you know you can you can res things and and have all kinds of dynamic stuff going around but um uh, you know baking the the, the the environment in general and you know whether it's yeah, basically baking uh, to super optimize a bit for runtime and not have expectations of being able to sort of modify large aspect of the environment at the runtime is is. And <laughs> it was yesterday. I was at the VW uh, VP, the educational conference, and spoke there, and it was so awesome that hey, sit in this chair. No, our chairs are too far apart, and just you know, just all right, just just let's just change the environment to be, make a better layout like right here and there and we don't have to like republish this whole experience right. or anything. it's like that's so awesome but you know and that's vr just sort of forced us to just think differently about things so uh, which is a large part of why the products are turning out to be rather differently and so there, there, are, there are bits of the, the same technology that we're that we're looking at Bringing back and, and taking render pipeline of, stuff. Um, some of it, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's a couple of the new effects that will be coming out with uh, the environment enhancements projects take advantage of that kind of pre-baking technology to to pre-compute a bunch of the bunch of the effects. Uh, that yeah, Gra Graham to got to practice in Sansar for quite a while before. And I heard he's back to SL now. Yeah, we, SL we stole him. Awesome, good score. And he keeps. He keeps hitting with with very cool looking project proposals. When are you so, getting Monty back? Uh, haven't haven't quite pulled that one off yet. Uh, <laughs> Monty think, is Monty is knee deep in Sansar, so I don't. Uh, yeah, it's. I think that I think out, that Sansar management might put out a contract on me. If uh, I, he, no, he, has, he, has, he has leadership responsibilities over on the back end side of Sansar, so. Uh, but actually, yeah. um, <laughs> he Sorry. is he is among the most helpful of the of the Sansar devs. He quite that's regularly why, comes that's, back and consults on on issues that we have. Why we want him back here? Because he's very and also he had started on the um, please fix fix cash. <laughs> oh well, we're doing. He had we're started working, working on, on cash. Have you got someone doing that? We've we've got a couple. We've got a very active project oh. on, on trying to fix fix texture caching. Yeah. Oh, uh, nice! And, and then and then we'll move on from there to other kinds of caching. Uh, but uh, we have a we have a uh, we've been doing a whole series of experiments, and uh, some of them have produced um, surprisingly bad results. Uh, you know, there were there, and some of them have produced <laughs> nothing I mean, surprises it's, me with cash. Come on, it's uh, but um, but we're we're going to attempt to radically simplify the design and um, and uh, try to try to actually make the cash a big advantage. It right now, our our analysis is that the cash is actually not that much help. Uh, no kidding. So it really That's doesn't news to me. I, I had no idea. <laughs> um, depending on depending on the kind of network action you have and the right. kind of disk you have and the kind of graphics card you have, it actually can be better performance to just not cache anything uh, and just re-render everything off the wire every time. 
Now that's a that's a that's an edge case, but um, uh, yeah, it sounds like sounds like there are opportunities there. Yeah, there are yeah. definitely opportunities there, and and uh, we do have a, a, an active project on that. In fact, I was just reviewing the next iteration of the project proposal, um, next round of things to try just before. We well, given it. the amount of times, the amount of problems that um, we see get solved by just wiping cash um, and starting fresh, uh, you know, cash we know is problematic. And then you get people who um, change their cash uh, sizes and various things and larger cash going off and it's worse. Smaller cash is sometimes worse and it varies so much. Um, yeah. It'd be really nice to have... Uh, that sort of dealt with somehow. I mean, I remember um, when Monty, before he was switched over to Sansfire, he was looking at the cache. And um, and I remember sort of expletives being mumbled <laughs> under, his, <laughs> under his breath uh, about you know, the mess. Well, <laughs> it's, 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 it's not as bad as it was very early in my tenure when we discovered that um, we actually at, at one point, fairly early in Viewer Two, we discovered that the, that uh, the cash had a zero percent hit rate. Um, we were spending a lot of time and energy writing the cash, and then because there was a flaw in the in the routine that fetched out, wasn't actually that, using it. It was never actually using any part of it. Um, so that was kind of embarrassing. Interesting. Um, but <laughs> we're we're not that bad anymore. But uh, we're still. I gotta... We're, we're going to definitely do an, uh, a couple more rounds of. Legit question uh, from Ansario. Can we have an OpenGL core profile compatibility project, please? It's, it's, it's on the project list. I don't know when we'll get to it. It is on the project list. Uh, so, um, yeah, the cache, the, well, the, so there's, uh, you know, we, we say the cache. Uh, there are actually several caches. It is different, yeah. Right? There's the texture cache. There's sound the cache, cache, optic cache. There's the sound cache. There's um, and there's there's uh, um, you know, of course your inventory cache. Um, and uh, we'd like to make all of them more effective. Um, but at the one we're at the name, the name cache, yes. Um, the one we're focused on at the moment is the texture cache. Um, uh, my good, the one my... that has the biggest opportunity to to improve the the rendering time and especially I mean it should be true that when I come here for example um, the only textures I have to I have to load uh, from the network are the ones on your avatars for right. people who are wearing new avatars right yeah. because I spend a lot of time here um, and so all of these tax textures should basically always be in my cache and that doesn't that in general, I don't think that's going to require. I think um, someone asked about it in chat a little bit. That's not going to require that I designate this as a high priority place. If I just spend more time here, those textures should be the most recently. Yeah, there should be a usage, enough. right? Yeah. yeah. So they, it should just behave properly w without any explicit control. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. Right now, it doesn't. It turns out that um, in the current cache design, we spend more time waiting for mutex locks than anything else. Uh, a question came up here about. Uh, I see questions flying through here now. So, um, and I see we have a fresh audience. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> Word got out that Abby's here. <laughs> uh, Linux. No, Any news on Linux? Linux, please say there's news on Linux. There's Apparently, no I'm moderating. There, apparently, there's there's no particular. That's fine. I'm happy to have you do that. Um, uh, I there's no particular news on Linux, um, other than we do intend to try to ramp up. The are, are any of those hires hires Debian. Linux hires? Uh, no. We don't have any Linux viewer hires. No. Um, I the will. The number of I, Linux users is so small. I know, but they're so loud. loud. <laughs> yeah, I know, but that's that's normal. That's the extreme minorities that that sort of scream 
louder than the majorities, but it's just anything we can do to make it better for Windows and Mac people would way uh, be way more beneficial uh, than, than spending energy on Linux for us. Linux Linux users, the Windows viewer works just fine under under Wine. Oh, is that right? There's no reason to say that you can't get into Second Life just because we don't have a Linux build. The Windows viewer works fine under Wine. So there is a workaround. I, I, um, I just see. Which is, this does not mean we won't try to to support the community in in maintaining a Linux viewer, but I have to emphasize. What we will be able to do is support the community in doing it. We won't actually be doing that much work on it. Um, so the trouble is, you know, we're all finding. I think we're all having trouble finding uh, Linux developers. Um, and I know that you guys want, you know, contributions from third-party viewers in regards to Linux, but uh, we're also having that same problem. Yeah. Well, that's uh, you know, people who use Linux and are not willing to contribute to it are missing the point. Um, I mean, I was a Linux desktop user for many years um, and might be again someday, but uh, it's, it's, it's not an off the shelf product. It just isn't. And, and if you're not willing to spend time and effort, the part of why it's cheap is that you pay for it in time and effort, not in dollars. That's the nature of yeah. the beast. It's that's what it's supposed yeah, to I don't, be. Yeah, I don't. Like I don't. Um, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just, <laughs> you know, I got all these emails from Linux people. <laughs> uh, our own, uh, our own operations folks, who are, of course, all Linux gurus of the of the first order. Right. Uh, you know, believe me, I hear from them when I tell them there's not a Linux viewer, uh, and some of them are clamoring to contribute. So, um, but uh, we'll see. Abby, there's a there's a question from Serial for Abby there in text. Uh, you should open GL. I'm yeah, talking FPS with some people there. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Serial, you're you're echoing. Graham's project proposals. So, uh, as soon as we get some of the the real serious bugs that need attention dealt with, like the fact that the cache isn't very good, um, we'll uh, we'll get to doing some of that other stuff. Yeah, and I'm going to have to have um, I'll speak to as to whether Second Life is going to attempt to. Uh go beyond OpenGL or, or take more advantage of the GPU? I mean, I don't know what you guys... We'd, we'd very much like to. Um, I. It's worth pointing out that Sansar's platform requirements are rather dramatic, even aside from VR, are rather dramatically higher than Second Life's. If I was to say that uh, we're going to do... We're, we're going to spend a bunch of effort and do very fancy GPU-based uh, things that Sansar does now. We could certainly do that. What I'd be doing is turning my back on a third or more of the Second Life users, and I, I'm definitely not prepared to do that. In, because in they what simply way? don't actually two thirds. Yeah, um, they don't have hardware that can. Oh, run because that the system. Style right, right. Gotcha. Of gotcha. System. They simply wouldn't be able, we wouldn't be able to do it. We would have to say to them, the viewer won't work at all. Not the viewer will work poorly. The viewer won't work on your machine. We're not going to do that. Grumpity would strangle me in my sleep before she'd let that happen. It's not if the Sansa, users got Sansa to her is, first. Sensor yeah. is, is faster than Second Life on higher end systems, but it's slower on lower end systems. <laughs> right. Well, and, you know, the minimum requirement has been growing just with Second Life, although you guys have been mitigating that somewhat with um, uh, jelly dolls and various methods like that, too, so. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, lots of performance improvements have gone into Second Life, and uh, it's a 
sixty yeah. four bit was kind of a nice move as well for the people yep. that well, especially for a crash trade. Yeah. The yep. crash rate is appalling on thirty two bit. Uh, and we have 64-bit users running 32-bit, which just baffle, baffles me. I, I don't <laughs> If you can run 64-bit, why not run 64-bit? Did choose explicitly do that? Don't, yeah. Don't we? yeah. Yeah, there are some people just uh, seem to be allergic to upgrading their system, no matter how much better it's going to be if they do it. Uh, um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's puzzling. Um, but... Um, so we're, we're trying to maintain backwards compatibility to a degree that is, is not the ambition on any thing I've ever worked on. Uh, but that has a, that has a cost in, in terms of how, how much we can push the envelope, uh, towards the high end. Yeah. Now backwards compatibility is also, you know, a something Sandstar is trying to solve for um, on a go-forward basis. I mean, it's kind of a unique... Well, and, and that's, that's one of the things that we tend to um, uh, advocate as well when you guys are coming out with new stuff is, is just like we're doing right now about Linux. Like, please don't get rid of Linux. You know, we still have still enough users out. Yeah, but sometimes it, you have to decide on things to not... Yeah. Yeah. Actually, decisions of what not to do sometimes are more important than what to do to get focus. And this is part of, you know, where the team, I think, has done so well over the last several years is, is being really smart about what not to do and where to focus their time and energy to make Second Life so much better than it is today. Um, Pat isn't here, but uh, since Abby is here, how's the gateway programs working? How's that working out well? I haven't talked to Patch in a while. I need to reach out to him. Yeah, we, we haven't put a ton of muscle behind it. Um, there, there's definitely some gateways out there. Uh, it's something we're offering, and I'm actually asking questions around why are we not being more trying to get more gateways out there in the world. Uh, well, I mean, I we're one, running one, and there's a few others that we're working with as well that are yeah. established now. And so there's a working model. It could be promoted better, I think, now. Exactly. And so, I mean, I think one challenge of Second Life, um, which is also why it's so awesome, is just the incredible breadth of types of content, types of communities, languages, cultures, and us marketing uh, Second Life as just a thing and drive a lot of users through kind of the front door, there's no way we could ever sort of really successfully target all these unique communities and cultures and languages and stuff. So putting more power into your hands and other people's hands to successfully attract audiences for their content, their experiences, and their communities their events, what it might be, is kind of how I feel we can get sort of better scale on, on this transition and uh, more relevant customer acquisition. So that's where place pages and uh, gateways kind of come in as, as attempts to help you guys attract audiences for, for your stuff. Right. Because we're not likely to be the best at shoving the right types of users at you. So it's, you know, giving you the power to pull audiences into your stuff is, uh, I think, is important. So, Well, and, uh, and if the retention rates are, are acceptable, uh, uh, competitive even with Lin and Lab retention rates, then uh, within the gateways, I mean, then, um, it just makes sense then to, to promote the gateways more. And yeah. Not promote existing gateways necessarily, but get more uh, community members involved in forming their own gateways. Yeah, and it's just a, it's kind of a slightly different type of customer almost. I think about customer acquisition and wh where to go get those customers and get the whole onboarding experience of them into your experience and how do you then get return on that investment of doing all that work is, is kind of a unique type of uh, customer that can do that. Um, it's not necessarily your, you know, even su super successful region owners that have great communities don't necessarily have the skill set or motivation to right. do that. So, 
but we, we know in the past, you know, you know, Brazil was basically lit up by a gateway back in the day. And that was kind of like through a partnership with a, you know, a significant, you know, media player that could actually put a gateway in front of a localized gateway in front of a lot of users. And that sort of made Brazil sort of become something out of, out of nothing in, in a hurry that we now the Brazilian create. community is still growing crazy strong. Yeah. So we find the right partners and the right, you know, is it countries, is it topics, is it verticals, is it what, where, where can we find partners to, to, you know, successfully acquire users and they get return on that investment is, uh, I think where the crux is. So, um, but it, it, it works as you know, How, how's it working for you? Uh, it's going very well. Um, the, our biggest challenges uh, have been uh, retaining um, helpers, volunteers. Um, at least in, in our gateway model, we, we like to have um, people present to welcome new residents in Second Life and uh, provide them a hand. Um, and also we have a, a wide variety of uh, experiencers, or as you would call scenes from Sansar, for example. We try to have a, a wide variety of, of thing, interests uh, covered within uh, our, our gateway regions. And I think that somewhat applies to the other gateways as well. Um, so human resources is a problem, obviously. Uh, burnout is a factor. Uh, governance is somewhat of a factor, although we're getting that under control now. Um, and uh, you know, the, one of the things that would be very helpful, oh, Oz, I'm going to put you on the, <laughs> putting you on the uh, hot seat again, uh, one of the, and Grumpity, one of the things that would be really helpful um, for the gateways and perhaps especially landowners, and since you guys are talking about doing land things, it's a good segue into um, estate management improvements. Uh, Abby may not be familiar with this, but it is has been a yeah. topic here. Uh, Rupert, do you want to field that one? Oh, uh, Ed's going to actually have something to say about that too. No, oh, Ed definitely uh, has something uh, to say about. That. It, no, actually, it had. Uh, I had something to say about the gateways in general. Yes. Um, Woodland and Lab consider going back to the some in some manner, similar to the way they did the gateways in the past, when people signed up, they got a choice of various gateways to join on, and that way you could tend to um, spread it around so that their interests are more covered. So we're in the process right now of uh, working with some of the other gateways to create a portal system similar to your portal park. Um, with what you guys have with Linden Realms. And the idea behind that is because some gateways have a stronger focus towards different interests. And I think what Ed is suggesting is uh, you guys may be, able to may be able to contribute towards that better. In, in well, which way? Well, back when I started, there were community gateways. I started on one called Avatar Island. Um, and it was a choice on the Second Life website where I had a choice of what gateway, what starting point I wanted to have in Second Life. Well, I see. For, for us to yeah. have some sort of aggregate entry point for many exactly. gateways. So, so then yeah. for somebody who's interested in airplanes, for example, you know, find them a gateway that's near to an airport or, or that has airport. Yeah, and this I think this is a good, great conversation to have with Brett uh, in marketing as we think about, and, and this is with or without gateways, how do we do more segmented customer acquisition rather than just like, hey, come to a virtual world, boom, go through the front door. How do we start to talk more vertically specific from the ad to the landing page to the registration flow all the way into the landing area, welcoming area, or whatever region you get dropped off in, how do you make that whole funnel be about, you know, I see a vampire ad, I click on a landing page, that's you know, vampires, right. I go through registry flow, I choose an avatar that's a vampire, I get dropped off in vampire land. Or, 
romance or education or whatever it might be, rather than sort of having what feels today kind of like, oh, there's an ad, but then I get dropped into sort of something right. generic that doesn't match with what that original sales pitch was all about. So there's some work going on in this area. So we're doing a lot of work right now with how we're bringing in new users and what we're doing with um, the new user flow. Um, there's some work that still needs to happen before we start doing experiments, uh, but we're very close. I feel like there's, um, you know, it, it's getting very close. And once we start experimenting, we have several things in mind, and this is definitely something we can put. This is one of those things. Because we try to play, well. we try to play psychic, uh, psychic slash psychologist when new residents join, and, and we try to sort of get a read on what might interest that resident. The most common, well, the second most common question I think that new residents have is how do I play the game, or what can I do here? Uh, the most common one, of course, is one I don't need to repeat. But um, so we try to figure out what their interest is um but if they come in if you onboard them into an, an experience that's already sort of geared towards towards them that would be i think quite a bit more effective yeah. the, we, yeah, the, and internally we, we refer to this whole concept as getting them to the good stuff right of right. course figuring out what it is they what think is the what it is yeah right so what we one of the first experiments that we're doing with this is a themed learning island. Obviously, this is more of a controlled environment for us. It's going to be coming pretty soon. Um, and it will be, you know, a themed ad that the user clicks on. They come into a themed landing page on the website. They go through join and they land in the learning island that follows that theme. And fortunately, whenever we need to use an example, we use vampires just because it's such a <laughs> awfully distinct. simple example and it's distinct to give, but I don't believe vampires will actually be the thing we're experimenting with. Um, I cannot speak to the presence of a parrot or a torch or any other specific object, uh, but uh, marketing and land ops are working together. Uh, LDW are working together to um, come up with uh, a meaningful theme process. And that would we're be going fantastic. to do some testing to see how that performs uh, relative to you know, our default process. Um, and I got to say, testing things in Second Life sometimes proves counterintuitive. There have been <laughs> yeah. things where we were like, of course, this is going to work, gonna work better <laughs> than the default. And then we and look at the numbers does. and everybody's scratching their heads. Of course it will. Of yeah, course putting greeters on Learning Island is going to do better than not having greeters on Learning Island. Except, oh. No. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just saying that with, you know some of those interesting learnings, so specifically like like you just mentioned that we we test A B tested with them without greeters, and it didn't help us to have greeters. So we could save that cost and not lose any conversion. Um, another fascinating one was when we tried. Uh, you know, server rendered so that you could walk into Second Life for like an hour uh, in browser, and so you could basically have an onboarding flow that required no, in, you know, download. I remember all of yeah. clients. That also did not, in the end, actually <laughs> show conversion rates that made it worthwhile for us to invest in it further. So it's, and although we all assumed that it obviously would be doing much better, it's like no, that's not what we found out. So, well, we're finding. Surprisingly, we're finding um, we're finding that oh, I have to be careful how I word that now because uh, I know I'm not allowed to speak of it. Um, we're finding that people who uh, should have a difficult time, uh, given their intellectual uh, um, intellectual age, uh, installing the viewer and getting into Second Life are managing to do better getting into Second Life than, uh, let's say, 20-year-olds or 30-year-olds or 40-year-olds. And um, that's a bit of a, a shocker since 
I think one of the biggest uh, hurdles to to new user retention is the difficulty of you know you got to create an account, choose an avatar, download the viewer, install the viewer, uh, launch it, get, come in world, and wait for what seems like forever for everything to go from gray to textures and and um, so th that's a, a bit of a surprise. I, maybe it shouldn't be. Um, the younger generation are pretty pretty good with computers these days. I, I do remember the viewer based uh, or the browser based viewer that you guys were trying to do. I did think that I, I personally didn't think it was uh, implemented well. However, I've given you a suggestion on how better to do it. Um, I think the lack of inventory was part of that problem. Oh, we did a version that had. Full was there a version with inventory? Yeah. yeah, with inventory, and it still didn't do. It was it was yeah, identical viewer. It was it was it was a secret. Oh, I see. We I see. I see. We took it, we took ten percent of our new users and put them directly into a, a a web browser, and it was exactly the same browser. There really wasn't any. The only difference was that you couldn't save things to your local disk. That was, uh, but new users don't usually get to doing that for a while to. anyway. Oh. So, um, and it had no better retention than than making them download a viewer and and run it that way. It was it was no different at all, yeah, which was surprising. And uh, so we're depressing. <laughs> depressing. Yeah. We've actually got a, a over the last uh, year and some, we built a fairly sophisticated tracking system for keeping track of how did we get a given user and how long did they stick around and what did they end up doing, uh, so that we can try to learn from that process. Um, and um, so we can measure um, fairly fairly well how any given experiment goes. Um, and we can also now. feed some really useful data back to the advertising networks as far as right. what did what so that they can optimize their algorithms and all of that stuff. So it's getting to be fairly sophisticated. But um, I'm hopeful that sort of more themed onboarding experiences for more and more unique, distinct user types uh, will be helpful. But until we see the numbers, we, we won't know. Something we'd like to see, um, and you guys have the moles for it. One of the challenge, one of the other, we've got a lot of challenges with the gateway and onboarding new residents. One of them also is providing them um, free quality content avatar like okay you've got library avatars and they're actually very good um but we'd like to so we've approached different content creators um over the years now quite a few actually it, it's very difficult to get um sort of useful content out to new people uh, that we can offer for free yes there's plenty of templates uh, on uh, marketplace but they all have these requirements that you can't sell it for or it has to be sold for more than 10 linden or you know those types of things um it would be really nice and i think very useful uh, we have a, a freebie store in in our gateway um and we're always trying to improve the sort of the inventory that we have there of, of things on offer it'd be really nice to see and i think it would help you guys too is if you put a a mall or two into creating um just some nice content for for new people which again is probably specific to the particular type of user going to a particular and their interest type yeah type of use, Granted. use case or interest yeah they love free stuff though you know uh, and I mean, we do try to introduce them to the idea that they can make money in second life um we uh, we have uh, lots and lots of experience that with the fact that if you offer people free stuff, they expect um, more. No, what you get is okay. a lot of existing users who come and create accounts to get the free stuff. Oh yeah, of course. Um, and that kind of pollutes your pollutes your experiment. Mm -hmm. um, but. Uh, you know, but, the, but which is not to say that we're that there aren't aspects of that that we're that we're thinking about doing. So the yeah, the freebies question is always weird, but I think um, 
the objects that are usually offered in a learning environment are not the sort of freebies that um, existing users are necessarily clamoring after. Um, now, if we were to offer free money, that would be a whole different story, which is why we don't. Um, <laughs> uh, however, uh, I think, uh, just if you're finding that you're having difficulty uh, figuring out what sort of things to put in the store, uh, we should totally talk. I have some insight. Have you? Okay, well, it's, it's not just figuring out which items, but it's finding content creators willing to donate said items. True, so we should talk as well about whether okay. there's we'll have some a made content that we could help out with. Ah, I see. Okay, cool. Oh, and there was something else, Grumpity, I had, I had, oh, uh, um, inventory texture things. Never got that back from you. Whole other thing. I'll send you another email. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'll follow on that. Um, okay, somebody here has a question getting back to oh stuff. Um uh, Pyrell, do you wanna try pitching that now? This applies for uh the system there, there was a there was a there was a particle question that went by or yes yeah, was about whether or not we do a particle question. That's the one. So throw it out there, what the heck? <laughs> this is this drifted away from being at all for meeting. It's we're drifting back towards original purpose. And uh, we're all waiting for you, Tyrell, no pressure. <laughs> oh, there we go. Gonna have to make my tech window bigger. Yeah, me too. Uh, three new data points. Oh, I see. It always has to start with you. Right? That's kind of an interesting idea. Um, feed request areas are good. Um, uh, Tyrell, I'd say you make the jitter and then come back to the next third part of your meeting and brief positive. Yeah, or stop by my open development meeting. Um, the. Um, uh, one one suggestion: it, If it, it's a whole lot easier for us to think about these things, if you do, if you've got you know a, a fantastic collection of ideas um, for, for how we could make particle systems better, um, a collection of Jira's that each just have one of the ideas in them is a whole lot easier for us to deal with than one gigantic Jira that has six different things in it. Um, it the, having them be related is fine, and you can even, you know, type the identifiers for the other, other related issues into the, into the, into the uh, resulting feature request. Um, that's, that's uh, actively encouraged, um, but it's, it's a whole lot easier. We, we, we quite often get these feature request years that are, you know, small encyclopedias with basically everything we ought to do to make Second Life better. Uh, and they often have good ideas in them, but it, what we end up doing is tearing them to pieces and breaking out the parts that we that we want to do. Because the more you put in, more somewhat related things you put into one thing, the harder it is to say we're going to do this. Um, but that, yeah, I, I totally get the midpoint idea. That's an interesting idea. I don't know. I, I, I have no idea whether that would be easier or hard, but 
I can see where it would be useful as a, as a scripter. Um, personally, the improvement to particle systems that I'd like to do is to give you a particle system editor in the viewer that just sets the properties directly so you don't ever need to write a script. I note I didn't say I was going to do it, just that I think it was. It You'll never ever get a commitment out of us. <laughs> you can try. <laughs> I try all the I would, time. I would take a contribution that specified the uh, the cap we needed to create or the or the message change we needed to create. Then I'd only have to do half of it. Int hint. Um. um Brian, oh, actually, I just, I was reading up while you were responding, and Brian, I had a good point. Um, the abandoned land in mainland could perhaps be used to house the various works over the years to add content. I believe she's referring to um, artworks that have been done over the years, uh, Leah, as a, as a good example of that. Uh, actually, not a bad idea, isn't it? Um, I mean, if you're trying to sell mainland, oh, good. Over the years, we've had a lot of conversations about how to best use the abandoned mainland um, and um, and kind of how to deal with that. Um, hopefully, there will be less of it for us to discuss um, rather than figuring out what to fill it with. Um, but yes, definitely housing artworks, uh, doing some landscaping, lakes and parks, uh, birds with trees, and uh, various other options. Spruce it up. Open yeah, spruce it up. Birds with trees? Or trees with trees? Trees with birds. Trees with <laughs> Whatever, it's second life. It could go yeah. both ways. It could go anyway. <laughs> Everything's possible. Um, uh, so I don't know how much longer Abby has, uh, or Oz, or Grumpy, or any of us for that matter. Who's got more questions? Anybody got questions? Seems to not matter if it's specifically developer at this point. Oh, and so I already asked that um, about the media changes, and it sounds like we may as well start a QA uh, without it. There's a, I understand there's a lot of root islands of second north. No, I'm not familiar with that. Right. Yeah, well, I understand. We, we can't do anything about the content. I mean, that's, that's. I understood though. I was informed by, I can't remember who it was. I think it was Rurley. Um, that there's a lot of sort of squatters on mainland who go in arrears with their their tier and um, but nothing actually happens to their content so it just sits there and gets ugly and old so well, there i don't know if that still happens but uh, you know that I, could be a source of a lot of the ugliness there's there's a, a variety of things we're we try to be really conservative about about user content, right? We try not to right, right, damage of user content um, by what we're doing. I mean, I, we, we've had a discussion thread going about making changes to how we handle um, people who are in arrears of one kind or another on their payments. And, you know, some of the suggestions were, you know, trash all their stuff and people, boy, the people, I, I, and, you know, that got shot down really fast. No, we don't do that, right? So um, it's a complicated question. Uh, oh, Kitty's got a good question. I like that question. Search is getting love. Um, we we have we are working on a new search infrastructure um, that we hope will be. If much, only much we were able to hire more developers. Uh, into those open racks, things yeah, will go a little bit faster. See, see those. See the see the careers page. 
Um, so that's definitely. Uh, you go ahead and paste that again, Oz. We got more audience <laughs> here now. Maybe less likely that you'll take one of my people. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean we we have a couple of we have a couple of slots for that. Um, so uh, we yeah we definitely we definitely would like to improve the the in world search infrastructure in general and uh, make it better instrumented so that we can tune it better and we can learn from it better. Um, but uh, Parcel privacy so for prims. Parcel privacy? Yeah, you know, privacy. we've got parcel privacy. I, I mean, it's just jumped in my head. It's so obvious. Entirely impossible, but just so obvious. <laughs> um you know, you have parcel privacy for voice, and, and if your avatar is in your parcel, people can't see your avatar in there. Um, you set it up so that you can't see this neighbor or their stuff. Well, see, the, then what you get is the land looks empty. True, everybody. true. And that's, that's not really the effect we're after. I mean, we always have de-render in the viewer, of course. Right. Yeah. So, and Ans is asking again. Okay, Oz, just repeat the the whole media thing. Yeah, we've got a. If you could please. We've got a bug that we're trying to solve in the media update viewer, where uh, some of the media handling processes, the dual hand helper processes that get started, don't exit on Windows Seven, and. Yeah, that keeps upgrades from working. And one of the things that we are most conservative about in viewer land is trying to make sure that upgrades will always work. Because of course, if you put out a viewer that's got a problem and among the other, and among the problems it has is that you can't upgrade out of it, then you've really imperiled user's existence. Right? What's, uh, Oz, you got any rough numbers on Windows 7 users? Percentage-wise? I have them for our viewer. It was something like 30% of Windows users. Well, that's not does. insignificant. Yeah. I mean... It's, it's unfortunately not at all insignificant. Um, and Steam pub publishes their stats on Steam. It's even bigger than that. Really? Huh. On... Uh, if you combine all the flavors of Windows 7, it's low 20s percent, something like that, around 20 percent. That's still quite a bit. There's, there's when a bunch you think of, of the volume flavors. of Windows users in general. Right. I mean the 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 biggest flavor is 64-bit Windows 7 with Service Pack 1, which is 17% of the users on our viewer. That's well, it, using, it would be that's similar. Just using them. It's probably yeah. similar. Yeah. Um, uh, and uh, it is it is worth I think worth noting that. Um, Windows 7 does not have as good a crash rate as Windows 10. That doesn't seem to be a selling point. <laughs> we still have 64-bit well, users running 32-bit. Uh, way to put it. Windows 10 has a lower crash rate than Windows 7. Yeah, that's you will like your thing. second life better if you upgrade. Yeah. Well, we've been telling our 64-bit users now for a while to use 64-bit you know, builds, but Yes, that also makes a huge difference, obviously. Um, roughly the roughly speaking, 32-bit versions crash at least twice as often um, as the 64-bit versions in our stats. So anybody uh, here up along the railings using 32-bit on a 64-bit machine, please don't. <laughs> and you almost certainly have a 64-bit machine whether you started out that way or not. I run 64 and 32, both on this machine, because I can run uh, 
with totally different settings that way. Yeah, there's there's that advantage. Um, depending on what you use, use the use the use use the learn to speak chess. Learn use the yeah. fewer. Well, primary four. is always on the sixty four bit viewer. <laughs> Yeah. Lassie, you're not really. <laughs> okay, Lassie is officially, I'm just saying, I'm disowning Lassie's not on the team anymore. <laughs> Yeah, well, we have we have a, a ridiculously wide range of capabilities in the machines that people are running on. Yeah, it's actually fascinating because um, really takes all kinds. There are people with yeah. really high end gaming machines um, and just stratospheric specs, and then there's people who I think are basically just seeing text. We still have people running um, Phoenix, which doesn't work like at all. I, I don't even know how they're on it, but it's completely text-based at this point. Speaking of deprecating old viewers, um, any new ETA on flipping the switch for uh, assets inventory? Uh, just sometime this summer because uh, is, when is you know we did our, our, our last release the, switching off the the udp transport uh, on the simulator side i, I haven't set a, a firm target we basically won't do that until we until we've built the change um and Um, so we have um, a Bill Linden here, <laughs> which is a, a fine and rare occurrence. Anybody else have any questions? Two minutes. Two minutes. You got two minutes. Snap, snap. Get him out. Got to get food. Oh, the oh, there's the inevitable Linden Bear question. Okay. Wait, you, you actually do have a bear, don't you? No. Actually, you don't have a bear. I've had, I've had bears made for me. But you've not made a bear. Because it used to be a requirement. I've been around since then. It used to be a requirement that new hires had to make a bear. Guess no one we still to kind of me. have that. <laughs> um, it's no longer a requirement. It's a strong oh, suggestion. Oh, that's silly. It, it There's needs a to be boot a... camp and a bear oh, nice. class. <laughs> yeah, we nice. actually have a class on how to make for a real? that Linda can sign up for. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. It's a pretty good um, class, too. But I also got to break it to you. There are some Lindens who are just incapable of yeah, building things. Buildings. And well, I've seen some pretty bad bears. made for them. So you've seen some pretty well, good Well, I, I seem to remember how, were... but also you've redone your bear since, haven't you? No, I still have my first bear. Still have that bear? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, my next one will be an all mesh bear, but I haven't gotten good enough at doing that. To, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, Animesh might push me over the. Oh, I can't wait to Animesh. Bring the Animesh. An bring an it on, please. Bear. Hurry up. Bring, yeah. bring Animesh. Uh, we're working on it as hard as we can. We're the uh, whole breedable pet scene is just going to explode. I, while we were in this meeting, I got a notice that the Bakes on Mesh uh, project viewer is ready. Uh, or ready. Nice. Ready to be built as a project viewer. QA has signed off on it. So uh, you can expect a, uh, a Bakes a on Mesh viewer, viewer soon. Project viewer. Initially, it will only be good on a DB, but uh, that will... That will change relatively quickly. 
Okay, just before Ebba leaves, um, I just want to, uh, the other day, um, I was I was on an alt, granted, mind you, um, but I was at a club, a dance club, and I saw Linden dancing with residents in that club. And it was such a wonderful thing to see. And I just want to, I've said it before, so I'll just say it again. Thank you for Ebba for encouraging Linden's to interact with the community again. Absolutely. I mean, that's, uh, it was kind of a weird place we were at when I first got here that Linden's were sort of more than encouraged to not participate. In. So, yeah. yeah. We're, we're uh, all for. I think it means a lot to the guys. residents. Yeah, it yeah. means a lot to the residents. There, there was it's actually a, kind it, of an assault plan. Like, Ed, they got here, and there was a list of things where, you know, we were waiting for him with. <laughs> this like, needs to change. Right, that needs to change. Let's start with this one, <laughs> and then we got to get Linden's in World. That's ridiculous. And then there's yes. the TOS change. Let's talk about that. <laughs> yeah. So, and much props to Ebbe. He came in and said, this is nonsense. And uh, that was that. Yeah, it's fantastic. Lots of great changes you guys have been doing. Um, uh, yeah, so it's 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 worth pointing out that um, there are Lindens all around you. You just don't know it because they pref most of them prefer to spend their time in world in alts. Right, of course. It's uh, you know I can I can tell you from personal experience many times personal experience that if you, yeah, you wander I around as a Linden in world, you you know it's a little bit I like. Being Brad before, I, I'm on you know. I'm on alts quite a bit. I, I mean, uh, my name tag <laughs> says I only look like Jessica Lyon. It doesn't always work, though. <laughs> I'm always Abby Linden. I don't do, do alts. I that's off. That's fantastic that you do that. Yeah, I'm, I just take it on the chin. <laughs> I I rarely do. I I you more fun. <laughs> yeah, but of course. A lot of <laughs> a lot of a lot of Lindens don't. They 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 prefer to be able to. Spend their time, Miss. Well, resident. I gotta run. Thanks. Thank, thank you, guys, for having me. And uh, thank you. Seeing Hope to see you again soon. soon. Yeah. Cheers. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye. Thanks, Oz. Thanks, Grumpy. Thanks, everyone. Have a great weekend. Laters.